Hello and welcome to 5 Minutes of Postgres. My name is Lucas and today we're going to talk about tidying up with Vacuum. Now, as the Postgres Weekly Newsletter um, put it, we can't go a month without covering Vacuum in some way or another. If you recall, a few weeks ago we last talked about that tuples not yet removable and it was essentially a very specific Vacuum problem that causes Vacuum to stall and not make progress. This post here is a more high-level view on all the settings uh, that are relevant for tuning auto vacuum. I would highly recommend that if you are not yet familiar with what are the most important knobs that you can set in Postgres. Sean talks about a lot of details here. Let's dive in. He first talks about releasing a throttle. And the main aspect to consider here is that auto vacuum has a particular speed that it's operating at. The idea is that auto vacuum is a background process, so it shouldn't slow down your database whilst it's running. Postgres historically has been too conservative about this. Postgres is quite old by now, and it was initially designed for much slower hardware. Postgres 12 actually made a change in this regard. Postgres 12 increased default, which was previously limiting to less than 10 megabytes of disk reads per second to 10 times the value for running auto vacuums. If you're on Postgres 12, you probably don't need to tweak this. But if you're on an older Postgres version, then I would highly recommend just raising this to the Postgres 12 default, which is two milliseconds instead of 20 milliseconds to have your vacuums complete faster. Additionally, what Sean recommends is also looking at the vacuum cost limit setting. I've personally not tuned this as often, but it's certainly something that you can consider. Overall, as you make these changes, watch your IO performance. If you get this wrong, what you will see is that vacuum takes too much IO and then your queries might be stalled because there's not enough capacity available. Next, AutoVacuum has a certain number of workers that it uses to perform its job. Each worker works in one table at a time. If you have a very small number of tables, you probably don't need to change this ever because there's no parallelization that could happen here. The reason you might want to increase this is if you have a lot of tables and we're talking thousands or tens of thousands of tables. This is a setting that applies to your whole database server. If you have a lot of databases, it also makes sense to increase this setting. The way to monitor this is you can look at either PGSet activity or PGSet progress vacuum. And those views show you how many vacuums are running right now. If you often see this being fully exhausted, then it makes sense to increase this. Next, we're talking about thresholds. Thresholds define when auto vacuum runs. The main reason why auto vacuum kicks off on a table is the auto vacuum vacuum scale factor. This scale factor says that at least this percentage of the table has to have changed for auto vacuum to run. Our default here is 20% or 0.2, which means that until 20% of the table have changed and there's 20% of that rows, auto vacuum doesn't kick off for this reason here. If you have a very large table, that can sometimes be a problem because it takes a long time to reach this number. There's an additional setting called the auto vacuum vacuum threshold, which is additive to the scale factor. Oftentimes you wouldn't necessarily tweak this if you are using the scale factor, but there's a neat trick here where you can say the scale factor is zero, and then you set the threshold to a particular um, number. Instead of using a percentage-based triggering mechanism, it triggers based on an absolute number of changed rows. The example of a large table, if most of the table is, is not changing ever, but there's a small portion of the table that's being updated, then this can help you make sure that vacuum runs. Important to note, all these settings are tunable on a per table basis, especially in this example of a large table. You wouldn't want to modify the server wide setting, you would want to modify the specific table setting. Last but not least, there's an aspect to consider here about transaction wraparound. Postgres tries to do a special kind of vacuum to make sure that transaction IDs are reusable and frozen so that you don't reach the point where your database reaches transaction ID wraparound, which is ultimately where your database would shut down because no new transaction IDs can be assigned. There is a setting that may be worth tuning, and the reason you would want to tune it is because the default is a rather low 200 million. Once that default of 200 million transactions is reached, Postgres will, will kick in a more aggressive way of running vacuum, and it will essentially vacuum all your tables, even if they haven't changed based on the thresholds that can cause a lot of churn on the vacuum activity. 
which you might not want. Sean has personally managed a database that had 30,000 transactions per second, a billion transactions during a busy eight hour day. If the setting was the default to a million, they would have gone vacuuming all the tables five times throughout the, the day, which is pretty ineffective. That's why it makes sense to raise that on a busy database. If you do raise it, don't raise it above a billion and be careful with getting too close to the shutdown time. Thank you so much for listening. This was five minutes of Postgres. Looking forward to talk to you next week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear about the new episode.